News from CBIT 2008. Laptop specialist Acer has announced that it plans to acquire E10, makers of the high-spec Glowfish smartphones. Interestingly, Acer had previously bought Gateway and Packard Bell, so it's increasingly looking like a name to be reckoned with in the future. Nokia has announced the Clamshell 6650, an S60 phone which is a T-Mobile exclusive at first. There's the now standard S60 base spec of a 2 megapixel camera with LED flash, integrated GPS, micro SD expansion, FM radio and 3.5G connectivity. Interestingly, there's no mention of any of Nokia's OVI components, but I'm sure they can be added if needed. Also tied to a network initially is the Nokia 6124 Classic, this time with Vodafone. Same spec again, though this time in the candy bar form factor. Nothing special about either of these S60 phones, except that by being sold as phones, they're bringing smartphone technology right down to the high street and mainstream. Maybe even pay-as-you-go? Who knows? Now this is something many UIQ3 users have been waiting for. There's now a native version of Google Maps. It's fast, it looks neat, and has My Location, which basically gives you a guess of your whereabouts based on cell towers. Visit google.com slash gmm on your device and you'll be away. Finally, staying with UIQ, here's the promo video for the upcoming Sony Ericsson G900 smartphone powered by UIQ3 and Symbian, of course. Lots here to notice from the touch-to-focus camera application to the iPhone-esque photo gallery, but stylist fans shouldn't worry too much, it's still here for sketching out doodles and reminders. The best of all worlds, let's wait until we see the G900 in the flesh. Like many others, I've been trying to get my head around Nokia's Ovi ever since it was announced about six months ago. And it's true that the various components of Ovi are still largely standalone, at least on the website if you go through ovi.com. But on the smartphone, things are slightly more joined up. To give just one example, I wanted to talk you through what I've been playing with this week, integrating Nokia Maps, automatic geotagging of photos and social networking. To try it all out, I headed with the family to London. Once off the train, Nokia Maps 2.0 provided me with pedestrian navigation instructions while we wandered round central London and the South Bank. This pedestrian focus is unique to this product at the moment and was apparently one of the drivers behind Nokia paying such a fortune for Navtech and their mapping data and expertise last year. Now, I'd installed Nokia's latest location tag utility and had this running in the background on my N95. As a result, whenever I stopped to take photos, the built-in GPS provided a fix and location tag, as you'd guess from the name, was able to tag each JPEG photo with my exact latitude and longitude. On the train home, I used the built-in Share Online facility to upload my photos to both Flickr and OviShare. Just playing safe, I thought I'd try both out. Now, OviShare, uh, previously known as Twango, just to confuse you even further, didn't seem to actually be doing anything yet with the geotag information. I'm guessing they're still working on the code. So I'm concentrating on Flickr here. Back at base, I went into Flickr to browse my photos and see how the geotagging had worked. I could probably have done this too on the N95, but sometimes you just need the screen real estate. Clicking on Map showed me my photos neatly laid out on a map and, through the wonders of Web 2.0, also overlaid onto a Google Ultra High Resolution satellite map. Now that's what you call precision photo geotagging. As friends spotted my photos, comments started to come in with the N95 alerting me and letting me respond in kind, with my photos acting as a, a talking point in a wider conversation. Now, I was using Flickr here, not OviShare, but I'd expect the latter to work in exactly the same way once Nokia has finished it. Interestingly, Ovi is much more than mapping and photo sharing. On the train up to town, I spent some time browsing the Nokia Music Store for a track I'd heard on the radio, and I bought it over the air for ATP, a bargain. And the store is gradually rolling out to markets other than the UK, though goodness knows why it's taking them so long. A similar comment could be made about the Engage gaming platform, hopefully about to widen out from its initial focus on the N81. And there's a new module, Sync, which should provide a new SyncML server to make sure no one ever loses their contacts or calendar again. More on this in a later show. OK, it's time for what you might like to call a magic show or a freak show. Either way, you'll end up with a pretty darned cool, brand spanking new Windows Mobile 6 smartphone, unlocked and SIM free, contract free, for less than £60, including sales tax. That's about $110 if you're from the USA. There are two secrets to my little conjuring trick. One is the likes of Expansys, here selling off the HTC Star Trek, also known as the QTech 8500, at clearance prices. 
The Star Trek never really set the world alight. It wasn't picked up by many networks around the world, but it's a fabulous little device, really small and light, brushed metal, stylish, has a 1.3 megapixel camera, and has an elegant clock and music focused external display. There's no Wi-Fi here, or even 3G, but that's a part the Star Trek isn't bad at all, especially considering the incredible price. Aside from the fact that it runs the now rather old-fashioned Windows Mobile 5, which is where my second secret comes in. Those clever chaps at the XDA developers site are challenged by the fact that HTC never bothered to do an official Windows Mobile 6 firmware upgrade for the Star Trek, have pulled the bits and bytes needed out of other WM6 upgrades and have put together a cutting edge version with all the latest camera and application enhancements with the very latest Java runtime with the latest Windows Live client uh, that installs perfectly on this the Star Trek. In the spirit of helping others do what I did, here are the bits you need to know. First, grab the new ROM and setup files from this URL. I grabbed the one with the added Neo interface, Microsoft's new Today screen replacement. Don't worry, you can toggle the home page back to older Today screen designs in seconds later on. A word of warning, if after watching this segment you feel it's too tricky, too geeky or too risky, then I really don't blame you. Installing unofficial ROM images is strictly for bargain hardware like this. Even I wouldn't try this on a £400 purchase. Next, I needed to CID unlock my Star Trek, apparently, and no, I haven't the faintest idea what this means either. But Google throws up the right three registry changes to make at this URL, and it only took a couple of minutes to do. You'll need a copy of RegEdit STG, the registry editor for Windows mobile smartphones. Uh, email me if you can't find it. I rebooted the Star Trek, plugged it into my PC, and copied over the three control files as per the XDA developer instructions. It proved hard to copy directly into the root folder of the device, so I copied into a subfolder, then cut and pasted from there using File Explorer. Again following the instructions, I ran SDA application unlock.exe, thinking to myself, how many more ways do I have to unlock this baby? And then ran spl.link on the device itself. The ROM loader multicolour screen appears, which looked promising, and finally I ran the supplied ROM update utility. After 10 minutes or so while the new firmware got copied over to the device, it rebooted, and this is the result. One cutting-edge Windows Mobile 6 smartphone, or at least as cutting-edge as Windows Mobile ever gets, and bearing in mind the hardware limitations of this particular device. No 3G, no Wi-Fi. Still, it's great to play with all the latest trimmings from the Windows Mobile world on such a small and cheap device, and it goes to show that if your manufacturer neglects to provide bug fixes and updates for a smartphone, then clever programmers can sometimes step in. Thanks XDA developers, and thanks Expanses. Now, I wonder if I can get someone clever to home code and improve ROM for my also neglected Nokia N93. Hmm. Hi, this is Craig with another smartphone show, World Looking to Blackberries. I was going to do a podcast around the Blackberry 8110, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get a test unit, so instead I'm going to be talking about how to set up your Blackberry on Biz. Uh, what Biz is, that's Blackberry Internet Service, that allows normal users with normal email like Yahoo or Gmail or normal pop-based IMAP email to integrate it to your Blackberry. How the Blackberry works is you don't physically enter settings on the phone itself, you would log on to your provider's web page, um, link your BlackBerry to it with the pin in IMER. Once that's done, you would then add your mail accounts. The nice thing with this is you can link up to 10 mail accounts on the BlackBerry internet site, and uh, the BlackBerry infrastructure will automatically pull those accounts. If you're using accounts like Yahoo, Gmail, it'll give you a live connection. So as soon as the mail arrives in your inbox, it'll be sent through to your BlackBerry. So it's very similar to Bez or BlackBerry Enterprise Server, which allows you to uh, get the email almost immediately. Um, the nice thing with uh, the BlackBerry Internet Service is you can also set filters. So you can get emails from certain people, or you can get email routed to your handset with attachments, or you can get uh, certain email not routed through to you, if you know you get spam or junk from certain addresses. The nice thing with this is it makes it a lot easier to manage your email. Uh, also, if you read an item on your device, it's read on your Yahoo or Gmail account or your pop-based account. And if you delete an email on the handheld, you can get it to delete off the server. This comes in especially handy, especially if you get a lot of spam. It allows you to manage it now in terms of you can delete it before you download it to your PC. So, uh, all in all, it's a pretty good system. 
Um, hopefully there's a new version of Biz coming out, version 2.3, which will now give you a live sync to Yahoo and Gmail. In terms of if you send an email from your BlackBerry, it'll show you sent items on your Yahoo account. So all in all, pretty good, some nice updates coming.